Hey guys, um, back this week with another Hasegawa kit. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at a kit from their Creator Works uh, series, specifically the 172nd scale ASFX Shinden 2 kit from the Ace Combat uh, series of games, and specifically in Ridgeback uh, Squadron markings. Now, this is a kit that I've wanted to get for some time. And I was quite glad to finally be able to pick it up for a pretty decent price. So let's get into it. Now, right away, you can see here on the upper fuselage have that um, the molding is typical Hasegawa quality. Very clean lines, very crisp, uh, very sharp details. Not a whole lot to say. Um, one thing I will fault this kit for is the fact that they molded the cockpit to up into the upper fuselage half so that's going to make um, painting and detailing it a little more difficult just because it's obviously easier to paint something that you can move around more easily uh, similarly with the nose gear bay on the lower fuselage half so overall good quality on these two parts now <clears throat> Continuing on, uh, next have sprue with the landing gear, sp here specifically the nose gear, which is very fine and delicate, so be careful when you're trying to cut it off the sprue as it looks like it will very easily break. And similarly he here with the uh, main gears. As for detailing, um, they're pretty bland and basic, um, not a whole lot to say. Obviously, could use some touching up. Uh, do get the compressor fan, as well as a couple other odds and ends on this sprue. Now, and a bit of a departure from typical uh, Hasegawa kits, uh, you do get two sprues of weapons, uh, specifically a set of full set of six AMRAMs and uh, four rocket pods. Uh, Fortunately, it doesn't include any sidewinders. Um, truth be told, uh, while I do own the game, I don't own this aircraft as it was a DLC, so I cannot confirm whether or not it carries sidewinders. I would assume it does, as mo most modern aircraft do. And unfortunately, I cannot confirm whether or not it's stored internally, which could be possible. But anyway, um, Again, it's a nice inclusion and definitely a departure from Ascaro's normal by the weapon set policy. Uh, we also have nose gear and uh, main gear, or excuse me, nose wheel and main wheels, which are again pretty standard Ascaro quality. No, excuse me. Continuing on, um, we have this. Second main sprue, which has uh, cockpit details, including pilot, uh, control stick, ejection seat, and other details, as well as the main instrument panel, which is uh, primarily detailed with a decal. Uh, we also have the canards and various other odds and end parts, including the uh, vertical tail. On this sprue, we uh, get the engines, which is a twin engine configuration and a, st a vertical stack, which is different, as well as the gear doors and uh, vector fins for the exhaust. Again, typical Hasegawa quality. Uh, not much to really say with these parts. Now, uh, one thing I am disappointed with this kit is that it only includes the uh, clear uh, canopy frame. Uh, in both the box art and instructions, it shows it with um, the sort of gold armored field type uh, version, which the again, the F-22 kit um, that I had previously reviewed did include this as a separate set of sprues, which is quite nice. And it would have been nice had Hasegawa also done it on this. Unfortunately, 
they did not. Uh, in addition to the canopy, we have a um, targeting part, which will need to be mask. Um, there's other lenses for nose gear light, as well as the HUD part. Uh, now, a nice addition to this kit is a stand, so you can display it in flight. Um, for some reason, they decided to do it in clear. Uh, personally, I think it would look better painted in a color similar to the aircraft, but again, to each their own. So let's move on to the decals. Now you get a nice uh, large decal sheet, which also includes the various uh, markings, as well as the um, a nice big uh, squadron signature for the display base. Now, uh, by including these, this simplifies the painting a lot, as you will not have to do a lot of very complicated masking, as these will allow you just sort of throw these on and uh, continue on. Granted, uh, given the small scale, um, this is going to take a while to do if you choose to do it. So, I mean, it's a bit of a catch-22. So, again, um, now to teach them, they're gonna ha you're going to have to make a decision as to uh, which way you want to go. Now, opening up the instructions, we can see that this is actually a very complicated build requiring a lot of steps that have to be done in sequence or uh, things simply aren't going to work. Uh, in particular, with the regards to the engines, as you need to get those mounted in uh, before you really can do a lot of the main assembly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Fortunately, some of the details, again, in the cockpit are done by decal, but in all honesty, it's probably a better bet to try and paint them as much as you can. Uh, yeah, again, there's a lot of small parts you're going to be dealing with and a lot of complicated sub-assemblies. So this is definitely not your, you know, quick and easy done in a weekend build. This will take a lot of time and ideally a lot of planning to get this done. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, the different weapon configurations, which does give this kit a decent number of options of how you choose to do it. And I almost forgot to mention, but on the lower fuselage have, uh, there is a keyhole for the stand and also includes a um, small part you can put in if you choose not to use the stand. Uh, excuse me if I sound a little winded, it's just at the time of recording this, it's quite hot and humid here. So, um, overall, uh, it's a complicated kit. Uh, it's not one for everyone. Um, in fact, I would recommend uh, beginner modelers to stay away from this kit as it will lead to a lot of frustration and um, heartache. <laughs> Uh, but if you're up for a challenge and you want to build something different, I would recommend it. Um, if I recall, there's one or two other uh, variations of this kit out there. Um, I believe this is the most recently uh, printed version of the kit. So, you know, if this is something you're interested, you might keep an eye out for it. So that was a look at Hasegawa's ASFX Shinden 2 and Ridgeback markings. Until next time.